Okay, so let's look at doing lined paper in PowerPoint. And so we can compare how to make these things in different software by doing the exact same thing in each of these softwares. So I'm going to um, get rid of this uh, example that I created. Let's close it out. I don't want to save it. And let's um, start a new document. I'm going to use a blank presentation. And the first thing I need to do is switch from being a presentation, which is what PowerPoint is really made for. And I'm going to click off of design ideas. We need to change this to the size of our document. So under the design tab, if you go way off to the right side here, there's a slide size and we want a custom slide size. So our width, let's make it the same as we did in InDesign, a seven by 10 and we say, okay. I'm not sure that any one of these is better than the other. I just usually do ensure fit. I think when you're starting with a blank uh, presentation, it doesn't matter. I'm going to click on these text boxes and delete them uh, because we don't need them. So now I have some guides showing here. So let me first show you how to set that up. So you'll see I also have a ruler across the top and down the side. So I'm going to go to the view tab up here make sure that ruler is checked so that you see these rulers and then also guides is checked and that will give you these guides and you can move them where you want i'm going to put them at the um, half inch mark here and let's put them over in kind of the half inch mark over here and that will give me a bit of an idea of where i want my um, margins to be if you want, you can also turn on these grid lines to help you line things up, but I'm going to show you a couple other little tricks. Okay, so now we have our document set up. We need to insert a line. So in the Insert tab, I'm going to go to Shapes, and that gives me all the different shapes I can use. And here is a line tool. And once I've selected it, I can find a spot. Let's go, let's just do it at the half inch mark. You'll notice I don't have bleed and I'm not aware that you can do bleed with PowerPoint. Maybe someone else knows a trick for that, but it kind of makes sense. This is really for doing presentations that it was not designed necessarily to create print documents. So it, it would make sense that it doesn't have a bleed option, but you know, maybe it's hidden somewhere. I think there's a lot of stuff hidden in here that we don't really know about. So here's my line. I held shift as I drew it and that uh, just like in design helps you create a straight line and I created it right across my guideline again. So now I need to create another one. I can tell that it's still selected because these little dots are on the side telling me that it's selected and uh, let's just change this to a gray color and then under shape outline I just want to check that it's a half a point weight so under weight I can see it as a half a point so that's exactly what we used before with our InDesign notebook paper so now I need more of these as far as I know InDesign is the only um, software not even Affinity Publisher at this point has a step and repeat um, there are some workarounds in Affinity but um, there is no um, duplication of the step and repeat that seems to be in design specific um, but let's do control c to copy you could also just right click and copy um, this as well and then control v to paste and so now what i want to do is i want to make sure that this is 0.28 from the other one so i know that i've got this on um, the half inch line. So let's actually bring up, let's select it and bring up the format shape. Actually, sorry, I take that back. Let's right click it and we want size and position. And I'm going to click on this tab position. And right now it's telling me that it is right at the half an inch mark. So that's perfect. So let's go to this one and a half an inch plus 0.28 would be 0.78. Okay, so now it is exactly um, 0.28 apart. I am going to select all of this and you can either drag like I just did over the entire area of everything you want to select or you can click on each line while holding shift. Now um, this shape format tool this was not visible on my ribbon up here when I was getting set up for this video. So if you are not seeing the shape format, let me show you how to get it. You go to file, 
all the way to the bottom where it says options and then customize ribbon and then you'll want to switch to all tabs and then scroll down till you see drawing tools and shape format and so I already have it added so this is still grayed out but when you click on this you have the option to add and that will bring it over to uh, what's on your ribbon and you just say OK and then it should show up so now that I have got um, the shape format selected and I've got my two objects selected I can go over here and I can align them so I can align to the left and we already know that the distance between them is at exactly what we wanted so um, we don't need to do any sort of distribution of that so now I can copy both of these and paste them now sometimes PowerPoint gives you little guides and I am not having that show up for me lately and I'm not sure what I did to get rid of it or how I can get it back I have not figured that part out yet um, but let's go ahead and let's just check the size and position of this next line so I gotta do a little math here 0.78 plus uh, 0.28 should be I think 1.06 that seems right and it looks right too so now that I've got all this I can copy all four lines and paste them again and then I can grab all of these copy and paste so to be perfect you'd want to keep uh, checking the position of each group that you paste um, for the purposes of this demo I am not going to do that because that would take too long and I don't want to bore you too much to tears um, but I am going to do one little final thing. I think I can maybe fit two more lines here. So let's grab two more, copy and paste, and put them around here. Now just to um, make sure that we are all distributed here, let's grab everything and distribute vertically and just kind of even things up. So let's just double check here with our size and position. Right click, size and position. So we're still at 0.78 and 1.06. So our next one, 1.34. I believe that is correct. So you can kind of go through and double check um, that. And the nice thing is once you make it once, you, I would just recycle this for future layouts. Um, so one thing you can do with PowerPoint is you can open up two different um, instances of PowerPoint and you can take these thumbnails and right click and copy and then drop it into another PowerPoint presentation. So once you've made this once, I would reuse it in and not create it from scratch each time. Because as you can see, it wasn't quite as straightforward as we um, did in InDesign. And the other thing is um, now that we have one page, we need to right click on the thumbnail and duplicate the slide to get page number two. And we'll have to do that manually for each page that we want to insert. Um, so let's talk briefly about the pros and cons of PowerPoint versus InDesign. So the pros are obviously that a lot of people are familiar with using it already. Um, now you probably haven't used it for this purpose. So there's going to be different tools that you may not be aware of um, that it has that you will you know need to figure out um, so it's not like you know I know PowerPoint it's going to be a piece of cake but there will be a much shorter learning curve because you know how to do a lot of basics in PowerPoint already and you know this applies to Keynote or Google Slides as well whatever you're familiar with so the learning curve is going to be shorter because most of us are familiar with it we've been using it for a long time um, some of the cons oh and also you know money wise of course if you already have it then there's no money to invest so that's the other big pro um, some of the cons uh, because um, it's not really made for book layout it's made for doing a slide presentation um, we've got single pages that occur here in our um, thumbnails and so you can't do the side by side left page right side that you can with InDesign um, so you have to create each page individually and so 
for the most part, that's not a big deal. When that would become a big deal is when you are doing a thicker book um, and you want to create a inner margin that's a little bit wider than the rest of your margins. Um, because when you do a thick book and it's bound, um, when you open it flat, you don't want the words or, or anything to fall into um, the area that, where the binding is. So you need to create a little bit more white space in there to accommodate the binding of a thicker book. So that's something you're going to have to figure out manually. So with page one, page one will always be the first page you see when you open the cover. So this is going to be on your right. So all your even numbered pages will be on the left side of your spread. All your odd numbered pages are on the right. So you're going to have to figure, okay, this is a right one. So I'm my inner margin is going to be down this left side. And on all my even numbered pages, my inner margin is going to be down this right side. So you're just going to have to kind of keep that in mind as you design pages. If you are duplicating, you will you will want to really pay attention to that um, and duplicate all your um, right side pages from an odd numbered page and make sure you keep those straight. So you might have to go back and forth. So like I might want to now duplicate this slide. Now it's going to duplicate it right after. So I'm going to have to drag it down and let's just put, put something on here to demonstrate this. Oops. Let's get rid of that. Let's insert a text box and I will just say right and then we will insert a text box over here. And we'll just say left. And so now when I duplicate this slide, it's putting it right after. So I need to drag it down here and then I'm going to need to duplicate the left side and then drag it next to the right and so on and so on. So um, compared to InDesign where we just said, you know, insert pages and boom, it inserts your pages for you um, already done in left and right spreads. So that is a downside um, as well. Um, the other thing is the resolution. Uh, default is 96 DPI. Print quality is 300 DPI. Now my understanding is anything that you insert into it, like for example a photo, it will retain the source resolution. So if you have a high quality photo that you insert into here, then that should retain its resolution when you convert it to a PDF. I believe in Keynote you can change the output resolution. I'm not a Mac user so I can't verify that, um, but I'm not aware of how to do that with PowerPoint. It may be hidden in here somewhere, um, but I'm going to leave a link to a resource page and I'm going to link to some people who do PowerPoint templates and also teach on using PowerPoint for journals and planners. So if you are interested in learning more about how to use PowerPoint, uh, let me point you in the direction of some people who are doing that, that you can learn from or that you can just get their templates from and have a big head start. So they've already done the hard work of figuring out the margins and duplicating the pages and all you need to do is edit it and tweak it to your own colors or you know just make some changes to make it your own. So that can be a great shortcut. So I hope that was helpful in learning how to use PowerPoint to create a book interior. Uh, let me just show you one more thing. When we are done with our book, we will go to file and I have Adobe Suite, so it's giving me the Adobe um, save as Adobe PDF option. But if not, you can just go to print and you can um, print to PDF if you don't have Adobe or again, I, I usually just print to Adobe and it will export it um, that way. Um, I believe if you export, yes, you can export also and create a PDF document. And so you would just say create the document, find a place to save it, and then just say OK. So that way you can export it as a PDF. All right, so the last design video is going to be using Canva. Um, so we'll show you how to use Canva to do this same thing.